Hi everybody, this is Levi Clay and today I'm going to be starting another little series on my YouTube channel called The Fretboard Diaries. Now the concept behind the Fretboard Diaries is very simple. I'm going to be responding to some of the excellent people on the fretboard.co.uk, which is a forum, you'll find a link to it below with the question um, in question. <laughs> um, and I will be responding to that question and giving the person that's asked the question some answers. And the reason I'm doing this um, is for no reason other than I like the fretboard.co.uk. It's a forum that I've used over the years. In fact, this Howard Roberts Fusion um, is a guitar that I bought on the forums over there. I don't use the forums nearly as much as I should, and over the years I've had some really nice, kind comments from people over there um, speaking both to me and about me, um, and I appreciate that, and I kind of want to give back where possible. So, today we have a, an interesting question on the subject of licks. The question is... Why should I use licks is the question. And as you can see, uh, it goes on to say, I often see in magazines and videos guitarists referring to licks that you can learn. I take it that the methodology behind this is that you can use that lick when you're playing in a similar scale. Uh, but can you apply this to arpeggio use? Do many fretboarders systematically learn licks separate from songs? If so, how do you go about it? It's a great question. First, I'm going to address the uh, why should you learn licks part, and then I'll look at the, the rest of it. So the reason you should learn licks is very simple. Music is a language. When I'm speaking to you now, I'm not inventing words. Now, from time to time, very rarely, I might throw out a word that I've never said before, a word that nobody's ever said before, and you'll understand it because of the context that that word has been used in. But for the most part, I'm using vocabulary that I've already learned. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still improvising. I'm not reading a script here. I haven't planned what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say it. Because I can do that, I'm free to improvise within the language that I've learned. Now, when you think about how you learn a language, it's through imitation. You learn a language as a child by listening to your parents and copying what they say. Now that doesn't mean that you only ever copy what they say, but an important part of learning to speak and understand a language is by imitating the masters of the language. You think about it, when you're a child, your parents are masters of the language. So being around them and listening to them and learning from them is a fantastic way to develop because they don't tease you for getting things wrong, they encourage you. You speak, you make mistakes, and over time you improve to a degree of fluency. And you'll get the same benefit from learning licks on the guitar. As I say, it's not your end goal to just be able to recite licks. And I think a lot of it comes down to what you think a lick is. You see great instructional products like um, the Jam Track Central stuff where they have these licks packages. And they'll often have these licks that are 8, 16 bars long. And what they're doing is they're giving you excellent value for money, but at the same time, not really licks in the way that I think of licks. To me, a lick is a short phrase. A lick is a a two-beat phrase or a even four-note phrase. Um, something like this I would deem still to be a lick. To me, that's a lick. Because I'll use that... When I'm improvising, I'm using phrases like that to give my licks some context, give my phrases some context. When you think of a player like Alan Holdsworth, a lot of these more traditional blues roots uh, influenced licks aren't there. And for that reason, they have a totally different sound, which um, you know either appeals to you or doesn't appeal to you. But I think that's the reason it either does or doesn't appeal to you. It's the, it's the lack of repetition, the lack of traditional... Uh, sound versus the more rooted in the traditional vocabulary thing. I lean more towards traditional vocabulary. Anyway, so um, when we look at licks and phrases and things, a lick can be something long or it can be something short. To me, something like this Eric Claptonism would be a lick. <laughs> I'm doing some variation on it, hitting the flat third, sl sliding down to the flat seven, but that's the lick to me. Now from there I might stick in a Stevie Ray Vaughanism.
that's the Steve Ray Vaughanism. Uh, or maybe. More Stevie Ray influenced licks. Um, maybe you play some um, Albert King. Now that's phrasing, blues phrasing. And I'm combining all of this stuff on the fly to say something, to do something interesting. Maybe you play something a little bit more Robin Ford. Maybe you play something a little bit more um, <laughs> Jimmy Herring. Stuff like that's cool. Um, maybe you play something a little bit more, for lack of a, a better name, Guthrie. Whatever it happens to be, it's all licks and vocabulary. And understanding that and getting licks from different styles and things like that is what's going to help you um, understand those genres and being able to speak those languages. Country vocabulary, um, like Brent Mason, if you're going... Um, now that's there's licks and ideas and phrases in there that are all um, exactly that licks. Now, what you go on to ask is the methodology behind this is um, can you use this and apply this to arpeggios? And the answer is of course, absolutely, yes, of course you can do that. Um, when I'm practicing arpeggios, and that's actually how I tend to think, I tend to think a lot more in terms of arpeggios than scales. But when I'm thinking arpeggios, if we take like an A7. <laughs> If I actually take it up here, now a phrase like that, a phrase like that is very much arpeggio bass, hitting the third, approaching the flat seven, fourth to minor third and third again. Fifth, sixth, and ending on the root. Maybe I slide up to the flat third. Now, a phrase like that can be imitated and copied no matter where I am. If I go. Uh, I played that in a lower octave, right? fly like that is about listening and stuff like that but it's come from the development of that lick and when I'm improvising over changes if I'm playing on a blues or something like that it's very much arpeggio based vocabulary and when I do it it's gonna it's gonna sound like the chord changes but I'm, and it's still kind of licks but it's very much arpeggio based like check it if I play a blues in A um, if I go uh, what am I gonna do <laughs>
joke, some good notes, some bad notes in there. But the point is, there's definitely licks and phrases and ideas, and I'm fitting these around arpeggios, um, practicing vocabulary like. <laughs> is never going to hurt you. So um, although there are some uh, responses to your question that suggest that maybe learning licks is a terrible idea, what I would suggest to you is I'm using licks there and hopefully you agree that it sounds relatively musical. Thank you for checking this video out. I hope it answered your question. If you are here from the fretboard, please do hit the subscribe button. I'll hopefully be doing more of these if you think they're in good taste and if you enjoy them. Um, and if you are here from my YouTube page, please do go and check out the fretboard. Some great stuff on there, good community of people, well worth checking out. And for both of you, of course, you can find my Patreon in the description. Peace out, guys, and I will see you again soon. Bye.